Number 24, letter A. Two point charges totaling eight microcoulombs exert a repulsive force of 0.15 newtons on one another when separated by 0.5 meters. What is the charge on each? All right, so basically, uh, here's a little picture, right? We got two charges, Q1, Q2, separated by 0.5 meters, and each are gonna experience a force of 0.15 newtons. They tell us also that Q1, and this is important, Q1 plus Q2, right? They're both going to total uh, eight micro coulombs. So we know we need that in just coulombs, so this is just eight times 10 to the minus six, all right, coulombs. So the, these two charges are going to add together to give us this total uh, coulomb charge. Since they are, since this is a repulsive force between them, you know the charges will be the same, right? So that's an important key. Basically, this is positive Q1 and this is positive Q2. And when you add two positives together, right, it's just we can we don't even need the positives in there, all right? So this formula is all important. Now, what I want to do is let's also we know we have two charges separated by a distance, so we know there's some type of electrostatic force there. So let's detail that formula. The electrostatic force. Uh, of attraction or repulsion. In this case, repulsion should be equal to the uh, electrostatic constant K multiplied by the absolute value of the product between the two charges divided by then the distance between them squared. So now, we know Fe, right? What's that value? 0.15, right? That's going to be 0.15. It doesn't, you might say, well, aren't there two there? And if I add them together, wouldn't they? No, no, no. We're, we're just look at each one individually. It doesn't matter which one we're looking at. All right, so that force is 0.15. You don't divide them by two or add them together or anything like that. All right, uh, so the K value here is going to be 8.99 times 10 to the minus, not 10 to the minus, 10 to the ninth. Now multiplied by the two charges. Now here's the thing. Do you know Q1? No. Do you know Q2? No. So we're thinking, well, how do we solve this? Well, look at, look at it this way. The two boxes I have here, one box here and one box here, represents two equations with, with two unknowns. I can't speak. It represents two equations with two unknowns. How do we solve that? We solve that by doing substitutions, right? So simply take this and solve it for, it doesn't matter, solve it for Q1. So that means Q1 will equal eight times 10 to the minus six minus now Q2. And what I can do here is take this value and plug it in for Q1 in my equation. Right, that will allow me then to solve for Q2 because then I'll have only one equation with one unknown. All right, so why don't we do that? All right, so here we'll have eight times 10 to the minus, 10 to the minus six minus Q2. All right, uh, just get rid of the absolute values, by the way. Just get rid of them. We don't even need them. Uh, then we're going to have now minus uh, Q2 and then that's going to be multiplied then by, whoops, multiplied now by uh, Q2. Okay, so that's then all divided now by r squared, which r squared was 0.5 meters, right? And that has to be squared. So let's start simplifying some stuff. So let's cross multiply these two values, right? So point, it's going to be 0.15 times then 0.5 squared. And then I want to divide this value on out from the right hand side. So take the 0 0.0375 that you found and divide it by 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. And we're now going to get something that looks like this, four point, oops, 4.17 times 10 to the minus 12th will now be equal to uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 6 minus Q2 times Q2, right, times Q2, all right? So now what we can do here is we can distribute the Q2. So we have 4.17 times 10 to the minus 12th will equal now, distribute the Q2, so here we're going to have 8 times 10 to the minus 6th Q2, minus Q2 squared. Oh, great. Quadratic, right? Now bring this value on over. So we're going to get an equation now that looks like this. 8 times 10 to the minus 6 Q, oops, no, let's do it this way. Actually, what I'm going to do, sorry, bring these values on over. I just like to work to the left. I like to work with the positive Q uh, squared. I like to work with the positive square. So this is Q2 squared minus now 8 times 10 to the minus 6 Q2 and then plus then 4.17 times 10 to the minus 12th. That's gonna be equal to zero. And now here's your quadratic, right? Now you gotta identify your A, B, and C and plug it all in. So here's, here's your A value, right? This is A. Here's going to be your B value, the negative eight 
times 10 to the minus 6. That's the B. B. And then your last but not least, your C value is over here. And it's positive. All right, so that's C. So what you need is you need the quadratic equation if you if you can't if you have to solve it that way, right? So it's going to be x uh, will be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you're basically going to plug it in, right? Um, I'm going to try to do that in the calculator quickly here. All right, so just give me two seconds. Let's. I'm going to do the radical first. So b squared. So we got. Negative times a negative will be a positive. So it's basically 8 times 10 to the minus 6, and that's going to be squared. Okay, Minus then the 4 times our a value of 1 times then c, which is 4.17. And I really should be using exact values here. I'm just going to use the rounded values. It's going to be too much to keep going back and forth. All right, 4.17 times 10 to the minus 12. I'm going to get that answer, and then I'm going to square root that. So the whole square root portion becomes 6.88 or so times 10 to the minus 6. So I'm talking about this. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'll write that part out now. So this is going to be negative b, which is a negative 8 times 10 to the minus 6, plus or minus this value now of 6.88 times 10 to the minus 6, all then divided by 2a. a is 1, so it's just 2. Now you're going to break this up into two things. You're going to add this value for one answer, and then you're going to subtract that value for the other. Okay? And what I realized already I'm going to do, you see the double negative over here, guys? Let's just get rid of that, and let's just make it a positive. All right? And let's just get rid of that bracket, that parenthesis. So basically now, uh, yeah, let's, let's, add these, let's add these two together. All right? So it's going to be now, so we get 8 uh, times 10 to the minus 6 plus then that value, okay, and then divide that by 2. So here we're going to have a value now of where x can be now, 7.44 or so times 10 to the minus 6th, okay? That's uh, 1x value. And now let's find the, that's when I added these two together, and now let's find the other one when we subtract them, okay? x is now going to be, uh, this is going to be 8 times 10 to the minus 6. Then it's going to be minus now that answer. Hold on, I just gotta, I just have to go back and find it now. There it is. Okay, and then divide that by 2. And here we get a value of about 5.6. So here we have 5.6 times, well, 5.61, I guess, times 10 to the uh, minus 7th. Okay, and this is now going to be uh, in terms of, so both of these values are now in terms of uh, coulombs, right? So this is a coulomb value, that's a coulomb value. Now, the x represented though, really x wasn't, uh, really it's q, q2, right? So both these x's represented now q2. So q2, okay? q2, and this represented q2. Now let's see if both of these answers are valid, all right? So let's take a look at the first answer. So let's go back, take this q2 value, all right, take this Q2 value, and we're going to plug it in for Q2 in my equation to find Q1. So Q1 here will then be 8 times 10 to the minus 6, minus then the Q2 value there, all right, of 7.44 times 10 to the minus 6. And let's find that, okay? Q1 is going to be equal to, so it's 8 times uh, 10 to the minus 6, minus then the 7.44. 4, 4, right, minus then that value. All right, so, oh, oh, no, I did, I have an error, so hold on, 8 times 10 to the minus 6th, and that's going to be minus, sorry guys, one second, minus that value. That's about 5.6, oh, wait a minute, huh, they're both the same, right? <laughs> so this is going to be 5 point, and that should make sense, 5.61 times 10 to the minus 7th, okay? Now, wait a minute, right, what do you, what do you notice here? If this is Q1, and I use this Q2 for that. Notice how, and I just uh, blocked out that 7. Hopefully that'll work a little better. Let me move it up a little bit. So notice how now, if I use, that's one organization of the pair, or the other organization would have been, here's Q2. But then what do you think Q1 would have been? Q1 would have then been this value. So again, it doesn't matter, right? They're both valid answers. So if they were both the same, 
All right, if they're both the same because they're repulsive, you would have one charge. It doesn't matter if it's Q1. One of them will be 7.44 times 10 to the minus sixth. And the other one would be Q2 uh, would be 5.61 times 10 to the minus seventh. Okay, those would be the two charges. All right, so now, uh, great. So now what they're saying is, what is the charge on each if the force is attractive? Well, if the force is now attractive, we know that this charge and this charge are not the same. Meaning that when you add these two charges together, we're really doing a subtraction, right? So what I'm gonna do here is change Q2 to be negative. Okay, I'm gonna change Q2 to be negative. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm probably gonna keep the math. I'm gonna just try to make some adjustments. So this would then be a, follow me here, this would then be a positive, right? We're gonna add Q2 to solve. When I plug that in then, this becomes a positive, all right? I, all the other math is identical still. There is no change. I gotta change this sign to then a positive. I have to change this sign now to a positive as well. And then what I'm gonna do is my equation down here will change ever so slightly, right? So now, the equation down here, and let me, I will do that. All right, one second, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so now I'm gonna bring this value on over to the right-hand side, all right, because I like to deal with a positive Q2. So Q2 squared plus eight times 10 to the minus six, Q2 uh, minus then 4.17 times 10 to the minus 12 will equal zero. So now, Here's the equation, here's our uh, A value. Okay, this is the A. Uh, this value then will represent the B. Are you guys having fun yet? And then this value will represent the C, the negative. Okay, you gotta include the negative. Okay, now we go back up to our formula here, all right? And what I'm gonna do is, since I don't have much space, let me just erase uh, this part, all right? Uh, let me find the fraction, right? So my B value squared, so I'm gonna take the B, it's positive now, it's eight uh, times 10 to the minus sixth. Oops, eight times 10 to the minus sixth squared. Minus now four times my A value, which is one, multiplied by my C value now, which is negative 4.17 times 10 to the minus 12th. Take the square root of that value, now let's write our plus and minus, and that value there that we found is gonna be uh, 8.98, so this is 8.98 times 10 to the minus six, and that's just what comes out of the radical there, all right? So now we gotta drag down the negative B value, right, and that's gonna be negative uh, eight times 10 to the minus six. That's still over two, and now we can start to calculate the values. So let's erase this, and let's see what we come up with, okay? So Q2 here will be, let's do negative eight times 10 to the sixth, negative eight times 10 to the minus sixth, sorry, uh, plus then 8.98 times 10 to the minus sixth. And now take that and divide it by two. So here we have a value uh, of positive 4.9 times 10 to the minus seventh, okay? So that's one when we add the two. And then when we subtract them, it's gonna be negative eight times 10 to the minus sixth, uh, minus now 8.98, times 10 to the minus sixth, and then divide that by two. And here we get Q2 could have also been negative 8.49 times 10 to the minus sixth, all right? So basically here, just like we saw before, I'm not even gonna bother plugging in, but these are basically the two values now, okay? It doesn't matter which one you call Q1 or Q2, but Q1 can be a positive 4.9 times 10 to the minus seventh, and then Q2 can be negative 8.49 times 10 to the minus six. These are both in terms of coulombs. Everything's in terms of coulombs there. You can convert it into micro if you need it, but it doesn't matter. Or you could have switched these two, right? It doesn't make a difference. But those are the answers, all right? So guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with more problems in the future. Take care.